Welcome to a very special mouse unboxing with my little cousin. You'll sing. Uh -huh. Czekaj, a co ją mieć tu? Zawidujemy się tu malować. Kapkę. I dobijemy malować. Okay, so here we have the latest version of the iconic Microsoft mouse now named IntelliMouse Pro. So there is the non-pro and the pro version. The mouse itself looks very similar to the previous generations. It has a braided cable and a scroll wheel that is quite clicky. If you have small or medium hands, you will only have the option of using the palm grip, uh, while bigger hands can get away with using some kind of hybrid between claw and palm. I would once again note that the whole design is based on the previous design of the IntelliMouse 1.1. Its high arching back and simple layouts are just trademarks of the mouse, which is by no terms a bad thing since for most people that have used the previous generation of this mouse in the past and have medium to large hands, it just works. Unlike similar products, IntelliMouse Pro doesn't come with any links or notes on how to register the product or download the drivers for it, which is a bit of a disappointment since we are dealing with one of the world's biggest companies. And also, the software itself is top-notch, so it's really a shame that they didn't advertise it or let you know about it on the box. The exact name for the software is Microsoft Mouse and Keyboard Center which suggests that this software is kind of one size fits all for all Microsoft products. Uh, by the way, you'll be able to find the link in the description if you happen to need it. Basic options include customizing your left and right buttons. Um, also, the scroll is very customizable and accelerated vertical scrolling can be toggled on after activation by scrolling a bit faster. It's useful if you browse a lot of forums, reddits, or skim through long documents. However, it can also cause problems in game if you use scroll for some dedicated action. One of the greatest features of this mouse are macros, available on the middle click and the two side buttons, which can be a lifesaver if you want to speed up your workflow. Every macro can be toggle or press and hold switch. However, in most cases, I prefer my buttons to have the default functionality. But it's a very useful feature to have the option of macros, especially in the combination with app-specific settings, so that your macros from Photoshop or some games don't cause problems in normal use or with one another. There's also an option to disable the buttons, but I personally don't see much point to it. You only have three buttons, so, so there's not much to disable for. The side buttons also include this and other options, such as the scroll click, uh, with the addition of DPI adjustments on the side buttons. When it comes to DPI, this mouse has a wide range of almost 16,000 DPI, with its lowest settings starting from 200 up to 16K, in increments of 50, which is well suited for virtually any use case, but also a pretty standard feature on higher tiered mice. Coupled with a great Pixar 3389 sensor and one gigahertz pulling rate. This mouse really shines when it comes to responsiveness and precision. Now for the part we've all been waiting for, RGB, or as Microsoft called it, the tail light sensor. You can use predefined colors that I'm using right now, switching the light off completely by pressing the black color, or the RGB goodness we all know and love to drag and select any color and its shade from the spectrum. There's also Xbox dynamic lighting, uh, which lets you sync your lights with your Xbox, but I'm a PC Master Race kind of guy, so yeah, won't be using that one. Performance settings are a must and probably the most important thing here. However, I'll just cover what are the optimal settings for this, since you can find all the details uh, in the description or by watching some other explanation videos. To make it short, you need to make sure that your angle snapping is off, if you want the mouse to move 
as you move your hand. This is fairly important for gaming and design since the mouse won't correct your movement. As for the mouse report rate, or commonly known as pulling rate, set it to the highest setting for the quickest and most accurate response the sensor can handle. In this case, that is 1000 MHz. As for the liftoff distance, it determines how much you need to lift your mouse in order for the sensor to stop tracking the distance move. For me, the default 2 mm works great, so I wouldn't recommend you change it. In the end, the only downsides I see uh, for this mouse and the software combo is that app-specific settings can alter only three buttons, scroll and the two side buttons. I understand that DPI or scroll sensitivity switching might be a tricky thing to handle when moving from an app to app, but at least having an option to toggle scroll acceleration in different apps would be nice, since sometimes the accelerated version can cause unwanted movement. And when you have to be precise, you have to turn it off. But if you go ahead and alt tab to a different document that you have to scroll a lot in, you are now stuck with a fairly slow scroll meant for precise ticks that you need in your other apps. As for the mouse and the hardware itself, I just love it. And I think it represents a great choice when compared to the current lineup of Logitech's, Zoe's, Razer's, Rockets, and other high tier end mouse manufacturers in price as well in performance and handling however it's not an ambidextrous design and it won't fit easily in smaller hands so by default it is a niche product like every mouse but in the niche it is positioned in i consider it to be the best mouse on the market thank you all for watching and see you in the next one